The president insists, insists that his order placing a moratorium on accepting Syrian refugees and temporarily restricting travel for certain countries is not a Muslim test. Trump posted a statement saying, quote, this is not about religion. This is about terror and keeping our country safe. My first priority will always be to protect and serve our country. But as president, I will find ways to help all those who are suffering. Joining me now to discuss Nadia Atwal, Jillian Melcher, and Ali Norani. And uh, Nadia, let me start with you because you, you, you're, you're born and raised, you, were you raised in Germany? You're, you, you go back and forth uh, from America to Germany, and you believe President Trump is doing the exact right thing because you've seen what happens when you have uh, sort of loose immigration rules. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the drastic change in Germany is absolutely horrific. And um, there was such a campaign being made in Germany by politicians and the mainstream media against Trump early on uh, for years. And they thought they were so smart. And yet uh, Trump already in November 2015 foresaw what exactly now is happening since Merkel made the decisions that she made with her um, yeah, wonderful cabinet. And uh, yeah, it's a disaster crime rates, especially rape, uh, assault on women across the board, and absolutely uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you see it. It's uh, from refugees. So um, it's not just the the Trojan horse aspect. I think people forget about the, uh, the big problem with uh, especially the men that are coming from countries with a very different cultural background and understanding of female and male equality, for example, with a very different understanding of uh, laws and law and order. And so when they come to Germany and they see our free spirited woman there, like in America, they actually think that they are being asked to be raped. So they're asking to be raped. And this is a uh, just one of many, many problems that we have. And Ali, by the same token, you, you, you think that this is a mistake. You're against this, uh, the, the uh, temporary ban that was put in place. This temporary ban by President Trump it really does nothing to improve the nation's security. Uh, it actually undermines the trust that we have with some of our key allies across the world. Uh, the refugees already, before they get to the U.S., are going through two years of security vetting before they even step foot on American soil, which is fundamentally different from what we saw in Germany or across Europe. People are getting to Europe without that security vetting. People do not get to the United States, refugees do not get to the United States without two years of extreme vetting. So, uh, Ali, so I mean, so it sounds like you're okay with vetting. What would be the problem with making the vetting process better? Well, that would, that, that would be a great idea. I think that this administration and Congress should actually invest resources to make sure that this vetting does occur in an ef uh, efficient and timely fashion. Because right now, you know, putting a family in a refugee camp for two years puts them at risk. Let's make sure that they go through the right steps. We know who they are. We know that they are going to pose no security risk to the United States. And let's get them here and make sure that they're, con they're contributing to our economy. Uh, you, know, the, the, it's, the, you know, Ali talked about families, but... Often it's it's males, uh, you know, and young adults, males who are coming here or in parts of, of Europe, and it, it, it's it's and they're the, they're the ones who ultimately have been involved in, in crime, who have been involved in terror attacks, mm -hmm. and and you, and you just have to wonder, uh, you know, you have these wars that are going on, and the real refugees. The women and children seem to be left behind. Well, so well, actually, I, I do actually, think that uh, there's a difference between what we saw in Germany and having been on the ground reporting on refugees both there and in Iraq. I, I think what we saw in Europe was uncontrolled migration. I think the U.S. has been a lot more cautious. But even talking to men there, a lot of them knew that the smuggler trail was really dangerous, that they're dealing with criminals there, that it's a very risky, uh, rigorous trail through Europe to get where but they But less wanted. rigorous was, than, like, saying staying in Aleppo. Sure, but maybe not less rigorous than staying in Turkey and trying to get your family to fly over. So I think maybe there's a bit, it is a lot of males, but maybe that story's a little more complicated. Here's what was frustrating for me to see this weekend. I think we all want a, a level of safety, a level of caution. But this was rolled out in a completely chaotic way. Two stories just broke my heart. The first, Syrian Christian family coming from Doha. They've been waiting for two years. They put all of their kids on a plane. This was going to be the day. They had a home waiting for them. They had family waiting for them, sponsors. They get to the airport and they get turned down. They have to take those little kids, put them right back on the plane. That, that breaks my heart as someone who's you know, traveled near children. But I think also seeing what, how we treated the U.S. interpreter in Iraq who came here. He was saying that 
these hands have touched so many soldiers, and they were put in who, handcuffs. Who was eventually, re he, he, he was he accepted, was, but right? but that's so insulting. That's uh, not the way to treat people who've helped our country. I, uh, I think that's despicable. But, but with those kind of, those kind of <laughs> sort of stories sprinkled in here, Nadia, are we, are, are we risking getting too caught up into that and, forget, and losing out to the big picture? I well, think Is so. that the big politically correct picture, which has, for many people, doomed maybe parts of Europe. Well, yeah, and also surprise is the most important element of attack. That's why you don't announce these things beforehand. And uh, plus, uh, these uh, seven nations, they were already listed under the Obama administration. They were already singled out then. There was uh, a travel ban, a prevention travel ban, um, 2015 already in place. I mean, these nations don't come from Mr. Trump's architects, uh, come from Obama administration. So he's just taking it really one step but what further. About now the, 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 the argument that this is a, a, a Muslim ban, that this is a, a religious test, uh, I mean, is that something that should be considered anyway? Um, it is not because it clearly addresses nations on the list and on the list already since 2016 and um, of course uh, these nations are predominantly um, with a Muslim population but the fact is there is a reason why they're on this list. For example, Yemen does, doesn't even have uh, a real government in place right now. So um, there are chaotic places and you need to bring some structure into that and I think Mr. Trump also is keeping his fidelity to his promises that he made on the campaign trail. That is what his voters wanted. He said exactly what he's going to do. He's doing it. Of course, when you do something, uh, and especially with this kind of a surprise effect, there is going to be uh, some trial and error. That is unfortunate. I'm a mother of but two there's children. There's collateral damage there. Oh, so it, it <laughs> and I think there. that's heartbreaking. What do you think but the damage course. is going to be? I think there's huge damage to our reputation. Personally, though, one thing that really bothered me over the weekend I'm Christian and I can't see this issue without seeing my faith. And it broke my heart to see people on Facebook saying, where is the Christian community here? I think as Christians, we have a unique call and a unique opportunity with these refugees. I think we also, because we believe that, you know, Christ triumphed over death, that we have a courage, a moral courage and a physical courage that other people may not have. I was frustrated to see non-Christians showing more courage toward refugees. I think the church needs to step up. Um, I, I've been encouraged to see some Christian communities stepping up to this, but I think the church needs but to play the, a role. But ultimately, though, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give you real quick because we got to wrap up. Uh, Nadia, I want to ask you, but you saw what happened in Germany. I saw it. With a I Christian see it. nation, it's open arms, worse. and ultimately it backfired. So somewhere you've got to find the right middle ground. And not, I don't think President Trump is talking about revamping a system that he thinks is failing, that has failed. We've had a, hard, a large increase of terrorism here at home and people are worried by the way, he is keeping a campaign promise. He is, and also it is very tough to vet a mindset. I mean, these people are not going to go through questionnaire and are going to be asked, are you intending uh, to do anything bad in this uh, country? Are you feeling extreme in your uh, uh, views and with regards to Islam? They're not going to convey it like that. I mean, this is something that is a really tricky situation. And that is exactly and why right. it's so important to have right. involvement from the church to help with assimilation. It needs involvement from all ends, but I think at this point it is better safe than sorry. It is not convenient, absolutely, but I must say, um, if you look at what's happening in Germany, and those are smart, so uncontrolled very experienced, very uncontrolled experienced politicians. We've got, to, we've got to leave it there. See it. Thank you all very much. President Trump battling backlash on all fronts from this vetting order. Uh, and then, of course, some are worried about the way it was rolled out in its execution. We'll discuss that next.